Good evening, I'm Florence John Duo, and welcome to another edition of Olsem awesome 1M. As we all know, healthcare is vital for all human life. But what we still question is, are all health elements being seen as a priority? One health element that has not been seen as a priority for years is the eye health sector. Thus, the World Sight Day that occurs annually in October is a day of awareness on eye health care. World Sight Day is an annual day of awareness held on the second test day of October to focus global attention on blindness and vision impairment. Eye health care is an area where very little attention is given. Over 29% of Papua New Guineans aged 50 years and older suffer from vision impairment with a major need for spectacles. The reason why people don't see well, uh, one of the commonest causes is uh, refractive error, which is just the need to wear glasses, whether the person is short-sighted, long-sighted, or needs a pair of reading glasses, so that's refractive error. The other commonest cause of uh, loss of vision or visual impairment is cataract. Uh, and um, cataract is commonly uh, due to aging, but in PNG, overseas countries, they see them at the age of 70 plus, whereas in PNG, most of our people are getting cataracts by the age of 55, 60, things like that. So. Um, Cataract, the, the other causes of cataract as well it can be from trauma or a person is born with it or um, it can be due to some diseases like in diabetes. A lot of the people who have diabetes, their cataract will develop sooner than later in a, in a person who doesn't have uh, diabetes. And that uh, treatment is uh, surgical. You can't wear glasses or treat it any other way. A person has to have operation. Trauma is a big problem as well. Trauma. Um, domestic violence or kids playing with sticks and stones or um, Lyme injury, a parent chews middle nut or things like that and they, the Lyme bends uh, the cornea and that can cause blindness as well. And because most of our people live in the rural communities, 80% um, of our population live in a rural setting with uh, who are farmers and you know gatherers, they um, have uh, a lot of vegetative injuries or so anterior surface problems. Uh, where they're the sort of commonest eye diseases that we see in PNG. Seeing the serious attention the eye health care needs, the 66th World Health Assembly endorsed the Universal Eye Health, which is a global action plan for 2014 to 2019. This action plan has three main objectives and they are, one, to advocate for greater political and financial commitment by member states to eye health. Two, to develop and implement integrated national eye health policies, plans and programs to enhance universal eye health. And three, to address multi-sectorial engagement and effective partnerships to strengthen eye health. There's roughly two years left to achieve these objectives, and how far have we, as a country, achieved? The government um, support is beginning to improve, but it could be better. Like, um, <coughs> I'm being an eye doctor for some years now. I, I finished in 97. As, as, a, and as an eye doctor, my first posting was in uh, two um rabal and some of the problems we face and most of our doctors are still facing is equipment diagnostic equipment and things surgical equipments to operate with operating microscope and consumables which are still um, some of the things that we're still fighting for for the doctors who are out in the provinces a lot of the provincial health authorities are now employing their own um, their of the ophthalmologists their eye doctors so then they are able to uh, improve the facilities that they work in, and, and, and that's a plus. And the recurrent budget, like, you know, the common things that are on the shelves in the medical stores or medical dispensaries is, is, what, is what is available now. We need to improve that and uh, get new drugs and the consumables that we need for cataract surgery 
Um, all those things are, are now on the medical catalogue, but the things are not available yet. And I'm, I've read from the chief ophthalmologist that um, the government has contracted somebody to bring in those supplies, but we're still waiting. I have can PNG right now is still developing and that is the good thing about it that it keeps getting better and I'm, I'm, I'm here to contribute towards that. Uh, looking at the I have uh, human resource there, there are many areas that need to be filled in terms of personnel for example, there are provinces that don't have even one ophthalmologist, and that's a, a big gap. And then also when you come to mid-level uh, eye health workers, they are also not enough. So uh, the strategy now we are taking is to train uh, doctors to become specialists, that is to produce more eye specialists, who will also train other people of the different cadres. That, that way we have a multiplier effect. Blindness or vision impairment have serious implications to the lives of individuals and also leading to the loss of productivity, thus leaving a lasting effect on the economy of a country. Visual impairment, first of all, is an area where um, the the people who have severe visual impairment actually are not so visible because they don't move very much. So you don't see so many of them on the streets. But there are quite a number of them in the communities. They just move around their homes. And so they, there needs to be a strong advocacy uh, effort to make sure that we get resources to reach those people and treat them. You're watching Olsem 1M. In this segment, we highlight the USAID school screening project, which is being implemented by PNG Eye Care and other stakeholders. It is aimed at children below the age of 16. There is an urgent need for eye care in Papua New Guinea, thus the establishment of a program called the School Screening Program. This program is funded by USAID. USAID School Screening Project is actually the first school screening project of its kind in Papua New Guinea. There has no been any school screening project in PNG, this is the first. And what we are building on and will be giving back uh, for other organizations to follow is a protocol. The protocol has already been developed. Implementing it, going out there to do eye screening is the first. We've been visiting more than 16 schools in NCD and East New Britain. Uh, Ted Duro is one of the schools. The important thing about uh, Ted Duro school screening is it was selected on the World Side Day. Uh, team for World Side Day uh, stronger together. We believe working with government departments, uh, health department in particular, education department, uh, other IK stakeholders in PNG uh, serves the purpose and the team. Uh, we believe working together can uh, help reduce avoidable blindness and of course blindness is avoidable and one way to get the message across, make it important and then prioritizing uh, this particular sector, eye health, would be to do outreach. This program aims to identify children who may have problems with their eyes as is evident in PNG, many parents do not see it necessary to take their children for eye checks. One purpose also of doing this school screening project is that in PNG you don't tend to see parents bringing children to the clinic for eye checks. Uh, USAID funded this project uh, and we are going out there now to do checks and 
to remove that perception uh, of parents in particular, thinking that if a parent, if a child is unable to see or read clearly, the most likely excuse or explanation for that child by the parent would be probably you didn't eat well, probably you didn't sleep well, and then they don't tend to believe that kids might need glasses. If you go into a developed country, let's say China, you walk into a classroom of 50 children, it's more likely that you would see less than 10 of the children wearing glasses. But you walk to a, a primary school, let's say Ted Diro Primary, a school of 60 to 70 children, you will, it's very rare, unlikely that a child would wear glasses. That doesn't mean that PNG children are healthy from their sides, their sides being healthy. It means there's no, been, no check being done and it was not prioritized. Partly would be the parents to blame. And PNG IK is, uh, with the help of USAID, we, we are taking this initiative now to go out there, do school screening and uh, giving facts and figures back to the Department of Health. Under this program, over 3,000 children have undergone eye screening in the National Capital District and East New Britain Province. Of the 3,000, 100 students have been referred to an eye clinic for proper eye tests to be done. This program began early this year and PNG Eye Care, USAID and other stakeholders are determined to see this program continue in PNG, aiming to minimize blindness and vision impairment in young children. The target age group we are looking at would be uh, between 9 to 13 and most likely this age group are in the third or fourth grade. And uh, the reason being that at that age it's very easy to identify children with eye diseases or children having difficulty in seeing and then it can be corrected. Uh, by the time they reach their uh, become adults or reach their high school, uh, it become obvious that they would need the service. Whereas at that age, they wouldn't realize that they, they might need having problems with eyes, but uh, was not identified. Uh, it will be an ongoing process. It will be a process and protocols have been developed, like I said, and it will be incorporated into the health department. And hopefully, uh, we are hoping that that could be a compulsory process where before a child is enrolled or before, in a year or in a school, maybe eye check could be one of the things that uh, can become compulsory. PNG IK is doing eye checks for free. No consultation fee, no appointments. It's just a walk-in office. We are located underneath, underneath Ward 7 and 8, but most general hospital. We have friendly uh, working team there who, who are able to help children, not only children, but uh, parents or adults as well. It's a walk-in place. Um, everyone can come for eye checks. It's free. They don't need to pay any money. Um, it's not like before where you have to go through a lot of process. It's, it will take you less than three minutes and uh, we have people who are on standby to help uh, solve issues relating to eye. Welcome back to the program. Papua New Guinea lacks eye care specialists and we are not even close in meeting the World Health Organization's eye doctor to patient ratio, which is one doctor is to 100,000 patients. One major challenge for PNG is the lack of human resource in the eye health sector. What we need you to do is when you cover your, you cover one eye, and we test you. Um, the training of doctors is done through the University of PNG, and uh, the uh, training hospital is Osmos Regional Hospital. Uh, we need to have more doctors trained. Um, WHO recommends one doctor per 100,000 
100,000 population, but we, we, we at this time we, we have about 14 to 16 doctors in the country. Uh, some of them have been uh, uh, have gone into private practice; they're not operating, but others have uh, about four. Uh, we've lost to um, to the admin, so they're doing administrative uh, duties and not uh, performing as an eye doctor. Yeah, so we need to increase um, awareness, um, sell ophthalmology to the undergraduates and postgraduates, doctors out there want to do ophthalmology. Just as an example, there are very many patients who need cataract surgery, but they are not able to access it because eye surgeons are few. Uh, some of these people are living very far away from the closest place they would have an eye surgery. And they are not obviously visible in the community because they don't move around so much. For the few eye health care specialists in the country, they struggle to deliver eye health services to the people of PNG with the equipment they have at hand and a limited manpower. Weekly we see about 60 to 70 patients a day. Even we have given the number of patients to be seen in a day. To 30, but with the population, we we cannot see that uh, 30 patients. We exceed to about 65 to 70, and we are told to knock off at 4 o'clock. But it's impossible for us to knock off at that time. Our the latest time is half past five. So because we are trained, we signed to work, we have to do that. It's just just because of the patients, we have to be there for them, to you know give them what they want. So by the end of the day, when we go home, we are happy of what we've done. If the work is not complete, you have sleepless night also, that you have not done your best. Many organizations in PNG are now working in close collaboration to address the issue of the lack in manpower. The Christian Blind Mission, or CBM, have made it possible for PNG to have a lecturer based at the University of Papua New Guinea, School of Medicine and Health Sciences, aiming for more exposure to ophthalmology to medical students. Stakeholder CBM, who has funded the university position. So we have a lecturer in ophthalmology now in the university. This is his first year. So we hope that um, you know, the undergraduate students will be exposed more ophthalmology. This, uh, the doctor is op operating out of the National Resource Center, which is um, uh, also a collaborative effort by Brian Olden Vision Institute, PNG IK, the university and CBM. So we have a National Resource Center where the doctors can train in. So they are the things that are sort of the, the are progressing, are, are progress, uh, something in progress for ophthalmology training. The establishment of the National Eye Health Center is a bonus for the eye health sector. This is a place where doctors, undergraduates and postgraduates can train out of and having the lecturer based now in PNG perfectly complements this. Prior to my coming to PNG, the organization that employs me, that is Christian Blind Mission, had been uh, uh, supporting expatriate ophthalmologists at Goroka for almost 18 years. But together with the, the Prevention of Blindness Committee, there was a change in strategy that instead of sending expatriates for just service delivery, we could change and have somebody to come and participate in the training so that we have more nationals who can give the service delivery. So that's what I'm here to do, mainly to build the numbers of nationals who are specialized in ophthalmology. Specialists in eye health care are urging for more people to take this part to contribute and help improve eye health care in PNG. We need more nurses to be eye nurses, specialists in eye, and we need more doctors also to be eye doctors to cater for the millions of people in PNG. So far we've got less than 20 doctors, so we need more training to become eye doctors. Yeah, I would like to encourage uh, doctors who uh, 
doctors who may want to take on ophthalmology that it's a, a good career to have because one uh, the, the impact at personal level is so great like if you operate on a cataract patient who previously had lost vision and they see again there's some professional fulfillment that you get but we also have uh, many people who eventually will need these services like some of the young people today are going to be old people tomorrow they need to we need to plan for for them or let me say we need to plan for ourselves when we grow older Welcome back. To conclude this week's program, we discuss about the eye health care sector moving forward and how important working as a team is in achieving set goals and objectives for eye health care. We also spoke to medical students from the University of Papua New Guinea and hear their opinions on the eye health sector. The step forward for eye health in PNG is to work together. If all responsible parties set their minds to achieve set goals, so much can be achieved. Eye health has come a long way, comparing it from 10 years ago. On World Side Day, it's, you know, the team was stronger together and we need to continue to work with uh, you know, network. And I think community is uh, working with supporting each other, supporting each other, and referring people on if you know that they have uh, an eye problem. and. Uh, the team was stronger together, so you know we can't take all, all the eye problems in the country on our own. We need to continue to network and and uh, collaborate with each other to achieve um, um, to reduce the WHO uh, initiative of reducing you know blindness, visual impairment in the world by 25 percent. We also spoke to some medical students on World Sight Day, and these are their observations and opinions on the eye healthcare sector in PNG. Um, from what just happened, uh, uh, Dr. Garp and the other doctors, they uh, presented about the eye issue in Papua New Guinea. Um, I think it's, um, it's a minor like discipline in Papua New Guinea. And, um, most of our government um, funds and all that are not really given to the um, eye care uh, department. So, um, a lot of people are not aware or like they don't go for check their eyes. Uh, like back at my place, um, most of the people have problems with their eye, but as long as they can see, um, they don't go for eye check because they think their eye is working properly. But um, it's very important that we have the eye facilities around the country for everyone to check their eyes. In PNG, I think it's um, slowly improving throughout the year. Uh, throughout the years. Um, I think more facilities need to be built throughout the nation to improve um, eye health care because uh, a lot of because a lot of uh, our people need um, eye services but uh, do not have the access to so, uh, proper facilities uh, to and doctors are also out there but think uh, they need um, the facilities to help them uh, uh, help the, uh, treat the and treat patients and provide eye care throughout Papua New Guinea. It's an interesting field uh, and because of the increase in the um, lifestyle diseases and lifestyle changes in our country, I, um, it will be, a, it will be a great need in uh, that uh, specific area in uh, ophthalmology and I think uh, I might, I'll, I will be thinking along that uh, if because of the eye services, uh, because of the lifestyle diseases that are causing uh, a lot of uh, I disease in a country. After hearing all the speeches and that toward um, through um, seeing those facilities, I think um, there's um, there's a lot of things that needs to be done. Like we need more funding to help the eye, eye care um, department in Papua New Guinea, and also many people don't know that they have this um, they have problems with the eyes. They need to go check it. Um, also, I see that it's also a challenging and. Uh, very 
um, every uh, kind of uh, every burden that is placed on the staff here that they're doing everything that they could to help I'm um, like we Papua New Guineans so that we can have a better eye care for a better country. These are some take-home messages for you from some third grade students from Ted Dira Primary School in Port Mosby. Eye care is important. Blindness is avoidable. Eye testing is free. Don't wait until it's too late. Our call for action. Stronger together. Teamwork is what we need. Happy Wellside Day! That's all we have for this week. If you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please send us an email via the address now showing on your screen or leave us a message on our All Sam 1 and Facebook page. Until then, I'm Florence John Duo, and on behalf of the All Sam 1M team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.